So today we have a couple of things that we're going to uh, get done. One is we're going to secure the sink to the countertop and then two we're going to install the water faucet. Now won't get as far as I thought I would today. I ordered parts on Monday for the sink and I purchased the two-day delivery but wouldn't you know it uh, somewhere in Seattle they must have had plane trouble or something and so the parts didn't arrive. So waste of money on two day shipping. It'll be here tomorrow which is Monday. So today is uh, Sunday, a couple days after Thanksgiving and I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving and uh, we have much to be thankful for. So once we get the sink installed to the countertop we get our faucet installed on the counter and make it look nice. Then we are going to measure for our uh, holding tank and our water tank and figure out how many gallons our tank is going to be and then we'll start shopping around for a couple of tanks and make about 300 trips to the hardware store to make sure to get the right fittings and hoses and whatnot and put this thing together in a pump can't forget the pump and uh, hopefully we can have some water flowing through this beast so with that let me show you uh, the little goodies I bought so the faucet that I purchased is uh, from eBay and uh, I know everybody's got the preference I shop on Amazon also uh, but with eBay I don't know I've been with eBay for decades so whether you shop at Amazon or whether you shop at eBay uh, you can always find what you're looking for so I found what I was looking for I wanted a cold only water faucet uh, I don't plan on having any hot water in here, and if I did, I'll boil it. Um, I don't have a bathroom or a you know, wash tub or anything like that, so just to have the hot water tank for the sake of a hot water tank, it's not good enough reason to spend the money. So, this is our unboxing. You get a uh, stainless steel braided hose, which I won't use, it's too short, and then our faucet. is right here and it swivels 360 degrees so I'll probably install it like that where the handles on this side comes down and goes up um, the name the name on this thing is called Jingpin and uh, probably so because it's purchased from China so to install that we have the nut for the bottom we have a couple of washers one will stay on top and then we've got the uh, the ring here. So we're going to find a spot about right here, close to the sink, close to the center, and that is where our faucet's going to be, just like so. And uh, I think that's going to look pretty nice in here, nice little setup. And heck yeah, that's going to work great plenty of drinking water so let's go ahead and mark for our hole to drill here I'll take the counter out into the garage on a couple of saw horses and uh, punch a hole through there I don't want to do any more uh, saw, sawdust in here and clean up and then we'll come back in and we'll install the sink so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, well which I have already done <laughs> is uh, put tape around my sink because I plan on putting uh, some silicone underneath the sink here and when we press it in place and pass it underneath it'll squish out and we can keep everything nice and clean so the cleanup will be uh, minimal and uh, also when I go to draw on this thing I'll be able to see some lines so I want to make sure that my sink, my faucet, is uh, in center with the sink and to do that I'm just going to lay a straight edge across this edge here and draw a line and along this edge draw a line and if I can find my tape measure now we can take a measurement across our lines here and I see that we have approximately 
Uh, 12 and 3 quarters is what it's going to be once you bury an inch. So 6 and 3 eighths should be the center. So if we call that right there, double check this side. And we are in like flint. Okay. So that's going to be our center line. And uh, I guess I should get a, a small square so I can uh, mark that, but we won't need to. We'll uh, go ahead and do the same over here in the back. Like that. And perfect. All right. And we take and set our stick right there. Okay, that's our center line. And to find the distance that we want to set this away, I don't want to set this so close that we're touching the sink. Um, so I'm going to keep it back about, oh, about a quarter of an inch, I'm guessing. Right about there. That looks pretty sweet. Now on the back side here, I have a three quarter inch stud that's running uh, underneath the counter. And then I have a wad of wires. So we want to be able to miss those when we put in our water line. So we're going to come as close as possible without touching the sink. We'll just go ahead and mark that like that. And there is our hole. So. We're going to get uh, a drill, grab our hole saw, take this into the garage, punch a hole in it, then we'll bring everything back in and uh, we'll go ahead and install the faucet first because then we can reach it from the top and then we will install the sink, get it into place and that'll be that. So let's go uh, drill some holes. So when drilling your hole, I'm using a, a 7 8 the uh, inside diameter of our pipe is three quarters, so with the threads, it's just a, it's just a little bit more than three quarter, a little less than seven eighths. So it'll give us a little room to play. But when you're uh, using a spade bit and you're going to drill your hole, what you don't want to do is go all the way through. And the reason why is when you punch it through. It's going to splinter the back of your wood. You want to keep things nice and neat. So drill in so the uh, tip of the spade bit is coming out on the under, other, underside. And at that point, then we can turn it over, got our hole, and we can finish going through. Just a little bit of this is optional, you don't have to do this. A little bit of sandpaper around the edge, clean it up so you don't have any sharp pieces of wood sticking out. It's going to poke you. I think that's going to work pretty easy. There. Got a nice clean hole, and now we're ready to take it back to the trailer and put our fitting in. Let's do it. As a side note, it's a nasty day out. Uh, it's raining, and the wind has been blowing anywhere from 15 to 30 miles an hour on some gusts. So, the trailer rocks a little bit, but it's nice and comfortable and warm, so uh, easy to work in. Alright, enough of that. Even on a uh, rainy day such as this, our uh, solar power is bringing in uh, 0.1 amps, which kind of works out because when I turn on one of the lights, I'm drawing 0.1 amps, so it's a wash. But uh, I moved the trailer out 
in the parking lot a little bit farther to catch some sun behind the house and uh, charge those batteries up during the day and they look to be pretty well topped off so I'm happy with the uh, solar so far charge controllers working great the remote is working excellent and I can see what's going on in a single glance Man, you can't beat that money worth spent probably about 25 30 bucks for one of those so if you have one of the uh, EP ever tracers uh, it's well worth the, the investment for the remote all right done with the sales pitch now we'll just set the uh, countertop back in place line it up nice and pretty like boom right there so with our sink because it had came with you know you set stuff down and now you can't find any since our sink came with uh, since our sink came with rubber washers there's no uh, reason to put silicone around here we're just going to go ahead and install that like so one underneath and then we'll tighten that up and uh, call that good. Probably use a pair of channel locks on that. It looks like a, a cheap brass piece anyway, so we won't go too tight. And uh, that'll be done with that. Sweet. So we'll take our faucet, go ahead and put on our nice little ring, go ahead and put in our washer, our rubber washer, set that in place and see, uh, yeah. It's gonna work pretty decent. So let me peel back some of the tape over here because we don't want to uh, fasten that down. So we're gonna go ahead and put our sink in. Get it where we would like it. Go ahead and put our back on here. That's where she's going to be, and then uh, then we can tighten it down. So let me give you a shot of what it looks like under here and uh, how we're going to do that. So here's a shot from below. We're just going to take a pair of channel locks and we're just going to ease that just a little bit and make sure that we've got it where we want it. like it's uh, getting there. Okay, I think I think we're down pretty good. Let me double check up here at the top because I want to make sure that this is nice and straight where I want it. Yeah, that looks good. Yes, and I am sealed all the way around. So that's looking very well. Probably one more turn or so. Perfect. Okay, so we have that pretty well installed. Now we can get our sink in place, put our silicone there, and uh, all that good. Now our sink has some molded in little uh, T-nuts, or not molded in, but they're tacked in, and they come with uh, some threaded studs. And so the threaded studs just go into these nuts just like so, on both, on all four corners. I've already installed the back two. And this is what's going to secure it to the countertop. So with that installed, there's also a little angle bracket. And uh, it's just a little L bracket. The short end goes onto the sink, like so. 
and this will attach under the plywood and then it has a wing nut that will fasten down tighten it up and it secures that sink to the countertop so with all of the studs installed we're now ready to run our silicone and uh, make sure that those are nice and tight in there okay so now we're ready to install our, our silicone and install the sink into place just like so clean up around here nice and pretty like and uh, then we'll have a sink installed so that's coming along pretty good so let me uh, run the silicone we'll drop the tank in we'll crawl underneath go ahead and install these I guess I could take the sink uh, the countertop off and uh, on a sawhorse and install it that way but either way I'm gonna have to get underneath because I can't turn this over and install the sink because I got silicone and I want to make sure that this is positioned right so uh, I could just picture a big mess so this is the this is going to be the most efficient way to do this so that's how we're going to do it so let me go ahead and get set up for the silicone and uh, get that puppy installed so I went ahead and taped off around the sink edge and uh, took a razor blade and just kind of cleaned that up so when I go to wipe up the silicone I'm not getting silicone all over the place um, I'd rather spend the extra few minutes getting everything prepped than I would spending the uh, whole time cleaning up. So with that, the sink is ready, countertop is ready. I have all my parts ready to install the uh, sink once we get that silicone down. And now we're ready to do some silicone. So we're just going to go ahead and put our beads of silicone around here and drop our sink in and get that installed. Call that good. Put a little cap back on. Tip from an old magic marker. Put that on there and uh, that'll keep the silicone from drying out. So now we're ready to drop the sink in and then we can uh, tighten it down and we'll have that installed. So. Perfect. Let that ease out a little bit. And that's what we want. We want our sink pressed down until we see that silicone coming out from underneath of it all the way around. And uh, then we know we got a good seal. Okay. So let me get my pieces set up here. Got my little angle bracket and my wing nuts and uh, see if we can't get uh, this thing installed. So crawling in there will be a little bit of a challenge, but nobody else is going to do it, right? So the small end is going to fit onto the sink like that. Get wing nut. Started here. Come on. There we go. Put that on there. Let me just tighten that down. Nice. Okay. Three corners to go. 
and we'll have it installed. So now that we've got all four corners tightened up, it looks like we've got some good bead coming out. So now all we have to do is just kind of clean that up. And to do that, we'll just get a couple pieces of paper towel here. And, uh, and then we'll take our finger, wipe it up, clean it off, and then we can pull our tape up and hopefully it looks really good. Now if we can just peel off the tape without making a big old mess, that'll be nice. Alright, looks very good. I'm happy with it. Hold up our tape mess here. And that is that. So I'll go around and just touch up a few things here and there to make sure uh, it looks good. And that's installed. Cool. I'll give you a shot when we're done. So here's a shot of the aftermath. We now have our sink installed to the countertop. And we also have a faucet, which uh, can rotate left and right here, which is good. And our faucet sweet it looks pretty good I think it uh, I think it goes with it so now our next step is to figure out the size of water tank that we're going to or the holding tank that goes here and a water tank under here <clears throat> and of course we're limited on the size of holding tank that we can uh, put under here but we're not too limited as far as the water tank and I'm thinking that I will probably uh, use twice the capacity of water tank to holding tank because the holding tank will also be uh, have a drain to the outside so I can always drain that any time sometimes I won't be able to always fill up my tank with water so the more water I have the better off I'll be and I can worry about getting it out of here um, once that holding tank is full. So with that, we'll put some light under here and we'll start measuring for our holding tank and we'll figure out uh, the gallon capacity and we'll do the same for the water tank and then we, uh, we'll have an idea of where we want to run out all of our plumbing and make sure our fittings on the tank are right and then we can go shopping. Okay, stay tuned. So for our holding tank, we can utilize this side of the uh, cabinet here. Our drain is going to come down probably about two and a half inches and then there's an adapter that goes on here that uh, has a, about a three eighths inch barb that's going to hang down. So overall maybe about four inches uh, that's going to come down and then we'll uh, connect our tubing or our drain hose to that. It'll come down, go back up and into our tank. So it'll create its own little trap. So I'm looking at possibly a tank that's going to be about 17 inches deep and maybe 13 by 15. 17, 13, 15. Let's do a little calculation. So these are the measurements uh, that I think I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with 17 deep by 12 inches wide and 15 inches high. And that will give me a nice clearance. So if we do a little bit of math, let's do the calculation here. So we have 17 inches multiply that by 12 inches and multiply that by 15 inches we get 3060 cubic inches okay now to convert that to gallons there are 231 cubic inches in one gallon 
So if we take 300 or 3060 and we divide that by 231, that's going to give us roughly 13.2 gallons. So we could call it a 13 gallon tank and be safe. So that's how we figure out how many gallons a tank that's going to be from uh, our measurements. So with a 13 gallon and I'm figuring if we had a 20 or 25 gallon water tank uh, that's gonna that's gonna work out really good. So let's take a look at something else before we call it a wrap. So our tank is going to be about 12 inches wide so it's going to clear this uh, stick right here and the wires so we'll just be right probably flush with the uh, the edge here and it'll be away from the wall so we'll we'll be we'll have some space around everything so on our water line that we come down we'll actually come down behind and we can run around next to the tank and then we can come down and go into our bench seating and then uh, our, our holding tank will probably be pretty close to our seam line right here. Then what we're going to have is a uh, probably a three-quarter line here on the bottom coming to a shut-off valve, running to a hose that will go through this wall, in behind the refrigerator, and down through the bottom of the floor with a uh, extractor uh, piece on that. So it will connect to a three-quarter and it will have a just a regular garden hose fitting on it. So I can shut this valve off, connect the garden hose to it, turn the valve on and I can drain the tank and uh, we can call that one good. So that'll be the holding tank. Like I said, the drain will have its uh, little adapter on here with a 3 8 inch that'll loop up and come into the tank. So we'll have a little trap here and yeah, fill the tank up and be good to go. The next step is to come around here. We'll go ahead and remove the cushions, lift up the bench seating, take a few measurements for our water tank and uh, determine how many gallons or what size of tank that we're going to need. And then we can uh, do a little online shopping and hopefully uh, we get what we want. Now we have quite a bit of space under our bench seating here. Each one of these squares are 12 inches. So uh, let's take a look, make a few measurements, determine where we're going to have some fittings, where our water line will come in, and then we'll uh, determine how many gallons that tank's going to be. So I do think that I will uh, keep it away from this wall because our electrical line comes in over here. So if I use this line right here as my uh, boundary line, we could put a tank in here, say 16 inches. Let me grab my tab because I want to write that down. So we're going to have a tank approximately 16 inches wide and approximately let's see here uh, let's say 18 inches deep and then for the height we can go at about, say, 14 inches. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see what we come up with. So we have 18 inches by 16 inches by 14 inches. So we can calculate that out here. 18 by 16 by 14 that gives us 4032 
cubic inches. If we divide that by 231 cubic inches, that gives us a capacity of around 17.5 gallons. I would like to go just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to take another measurement just to see how much room I need. And uh, yeah, recalculate that. So after taking another look at this, um, my original measurements were 18 by 16 by 14. So 18 deep, 16 wide, 14 high. I think I'm going to go ahead and keep it as 18 inches deep. Uh, we're going to go with 20 inches wide and then we'll go with 14 inches on the height. So if we do our math, 18 by 20 by 14, that gives us 5,040 cubic inches. And if we divide that by 231 cubic inches, for the gallon, that gives us a capacity of 21.8 gallons. Um, a difference of, say, subtract that 13, it gives me eight more gallons compared to the holding tank. So that's about what I was looking for, shooting for, is a 20 gallon water tank. So I think that's going to be plenty for this little trailer. and. Uh, if I drink that much water in a weekend, I'll slosh around in here. So uh, I think that's going to work for me. And just as with the holding tank, um, I'll probably come out the side, maybe this side, with a uh, with a shutoff valve going straight down to the bottom. We'll put a hose fitting on that. That way we can drain the uh, water tank. Uh, we'll also have a fitting at this end. And this is where we're going to put our pump and probably our accumulator. We'll run our line from here into our cabinet up to our faucet. So that's going to work out pretty good. Um, our fill line will probably come in somewhere up in here. And it's just going to be a probably a three-quarter inch. I don't I don't want the inch and a quarter. I'm not. I'm not in a big rush to fill this thing, but just I, everything I, I everything I'm thinking of is just a a simple hose fitting will uh, suffice for me. So plus I can keep the holes small in the side of the trailer. Most of the uh, water inlets that I see, man, these things are like four inches, five inches in diameter. So I don't want to I don't want to cut a window in the side of the trailer just for water. So uh, we're just going to keep it as small as possible and uh, that will work for me. We'll also run a vent tubing uh, for the holding tank and the water tank. And I think that's going to cut it just nice. Well, I think we got some things done that we needed to get done today. We did install the sink to the countertop, um, and it's, it's relatively simple. Um, and then we also installed our faucet, which I think is it actually looks pretty nice in here. I wasn't sure about the style. Of course, when you're buying things online, you never know what you what you really get until you get it. So, but it, I think it's going to work out really well. Um, it looks good. It's the right size. Uh, the only thing I'm worried about is once we get it hooked up, if there's going to be any leaks on this thing. Because I don't know. Hook it up it might have water spraying everywhere. So with that. Um, you know, we got the sink in, got the faucet in, and we've calculated the size that we're going to need for our water tank and our holding tank. So, um, now we just do a little bit of online shopping, figure out exactly where I want the fittings to be, and uh, then be able to purchase those tanks, uh, along with a, a pump and a mass, uh, not a macerator, an accumulator. Yeah. Chop up my water, I guess. So uh, I've got a little shopping to do. Christmas is coming, so that might slow the progress down a little bit. Um, but we need to get 
we need to get finished with this so we can get ready and go camping. Uh, spring will be coming before too long and I am excited to uh, be hitting the road. It uh, would be a bit bittersweet, one of those bittersweet moments because that means uh, we'll be done with the building video and uh, we'll just be doing some adventures but other than that, uh, in the meantime I'm thinking uh, of another another project so um, I would like to build another trailer probably about uh, 13 feet long and perhaps 7 feet wide and just a little bit taller and uh, take some advice from the viewers install bathroom and and some other accessories that um, they would like to see so I've never done that never done that before so it'll be a challenge and that's always good so Thank you uh, to those who have subscribed to the channel, and thank you for your comments. And uh, those who are watching, uh, hit the like button. It doesn't take but a second. And if you don't, if you don't hit that one, and you want to hit the dislike button, uh, hit that one twice. That one will that'll work. So, with that, I would say thanks for watching. Stay tuned.